So I'm going to tell you this afternoon about astrocytes, neurons, and enteroviruses. And so we have briefly uh, described the history of the virus. And here is just the graph that really demonstrates the correlation between the outbreaks of EB68 and its association with AFM beginning in 2014, where you see no EB68 circulating, no AFM, and then once again, the spike in 2016. But let's... So we'll just review a little bit about the pathogenesis of the virus. So you see it's thought to be a respiratory virus. It's thought to initiate in the nasal pharyngeal cavity. That's where the swab for diagnosis is taken. It results in mostly respiratory disease. And we know from lots of work on similar um, pathogens of this tract that there's very little or no damage during viral infection. And this is very important for um, being able to establish a viremia or find virus in the blood. And so we have not really been able to find virus or isolate virus from the blood of either children who developed the respiratory disease or the CSF and AFM. And EV68, by looking at the biophysical properties of the particle, is very sensitive to the pH and there is unable to um, pass through the elementary tract and infect cells because it falls apart. And so we don't find infectious virus, uh, isolate infectious virus from the stool, but you may find remnants of RNA. And to EV68, the question of whether or not 68 is neurotropic comes from the fact that it is very hard to find virus from the cerebral spinal fluid of AFM um, patients. So Only four out of our 626 cases have we been able to find virus. However, this is not unusual compared with for polio because we very rarely were able to isolate infectious polio from the CSF. The strongest evidence that EB68 is a neurotropic pathogen comes from two bodies of work, one by the Lipkin group here at Columbia where they identified a specific antibody to the C-terminal portion of VP1 and which was subsequently supported by work by the Wilson Group at UCSF. And upon radiological scans of children who developed AFM following EV68 infection, we know that the motor lesions that we can see look very similar to those of polio. So if we contrast EV68 compared to the other three viruses that associate with AFM, Enter 71 Coxsackie A16, and polio, these are all orally, fecally um, infected or sh- and transmitted. So you ingest, they replicate within the gut, they're shed by the stool, and there's a viremic stage that allows them or facilitates their entry into the CNS. And the EV68 is highly different. It's more like a rhinovirus. It's a, you inhale it, it replicates in the upper and or lower tract of the respiratory tra- of the respiratory system, and then you cough and you transmit it to the next person. There is no damage, so there is no viremia, and the skele- only skeletal muscle within this uh, system is the diaphragm, which is physically separated from the um, sites of viral infection. So our, it's very interesting how a virus that doesn't have a viremia is able to enter the CNS. And so we've started to try to understand this, um, but to do that, I need to define three terms, and these three terms are very important. They're neurotropism, virulence, and invasion. So neurotropism is the ability to produce infectious virus progeny after infection within cells of the central nervous system. Neurovirulence is the ability to cause disease from infection of cells within the central nervous system. And neuroinvasion is the entry from the periphery into the CNS. So an example of a neurotropic neuroinvasive virus is mumps, but it is not neurovirulent. There's no neurotropic, there's no neurologic disease associated with the infection. To address whether or not EB68 has always been neurotropic, we've collected 11 different isolates from the initial outbreaks all the way to the 2018 outbreak. And we asked whether or not EB68 is neurotropic. And so in this photograph, I'm showing you um, the, uh, the electron, actually just an image of induced motor, human induced motor neurons. So human-induced pluripotent stem cells can be terminally differentiated into various types of neurons. And we took these neurons and infected them with EV68. And all of the data that I'm going to show you this afternoon is measuring the production of infectious virus by plaque assay here on the y-axis, 
platform units per ml, and all the isolates and time points are on the y are on the x axis. And here in our induced motor neuron, neuronal cultures, you can see all of the EV68 isolates, but the 952 isolate replicated. You can also take human induced pluripotent stem cells and terminally differentiate them into astrocytes. And here, by this indirect immuno. Uh, fluorescence photograph, I'm showing you our human induced um, astrocytes using an antibody against GFAP, which specifically labels astrocytes. When you infect these induced astrocytes with EV68 and collect 24 hours later, or when you observe 100% CPE, you see now all of our EV68 isolates replicate efficiently within these cells. However, our goal is really to make an animal model that uh, will allow us to understand the broad range of EV68 pathogenesis. So we started off with asking whether or not EV68 is able to replicate in the mouse brain. And to do this, we generated organotypic brain slice cultures from postnatal mice at day two, day four, and day 10. These are all wild type mice. And we infected them with our various uh, EV68 isolates and also poliovirus or P1 Mahoney. These mice are wild type, they lack the polio receptor, the human polio receptor, so we don't expect or observe any replication of polio. And you see in both P4, P, P2, P4, and P10, organotypic brain slice cultures, all of our EV68 isolates replicate efficiently. To identify sites of viral replication, we use indirect immunofluorescence, here on the left is DAPI to show you the integrity of the slice by just staining the nuclei. We used an anti-VP1 antibody that is specific for EV68, and you can see infected cells. And then using um, stain against mesal protein, which is specific for neurons, you can see that this neuron is nicely infected with EV68, but additional cells that are non uh, mesal positive are also infected. We hypothesized that these cells are astrocytes. So we isolated astrocytes from wild type mice, placed them in culture, and upon confluency, we either did indirect immunofluorescence using the, once again, the antibody against GFAP to demonstrate purity of the cultures. So these cultures are 100% astrocytes. We don't see any um, positive staining mesal cells. We infected them with our multiple isolates of EV68. And here you see the New York, the Fermont, and the 947 isolates replicated efficiently in wild type astrocytes. We know historically that the type one interferon response restricts tissue tropism of related coronaviruses, including um, polio. So we asked whether or not EB68 tissue tropism or rep the ability to replicate in uh, neuronal cell culture was defined by uh, the same type one interferon response. So we pretreated human SK and SH cells, which are a neuroblastoma cell line with type one interferon 24 hours prior to infection, infected them with our various EB68 isolates, also P1 Mahoney and a related enterovirus EMCV at a 0.1 MOI, collected supernatants 24 hours later and asked whether or not virus replication was impaired. And here in the dark bars is treatment and in the white, in the gray bars is untreated cells. And you can see that, the, that EV68 is relatively resistant to the presence of exogenous type 1 interferon. This is exactly what we've observed with type 1, with polio, um, where polio is resistant to the presence or pretreatment of type 1 interferon, whereas EMCB is very sensitive. However, we know that most children who, develop, who get infected with EV68 do not develop paralysis. And so we asked whether or not, to resolve that in our minds, we asked whether or not in an animal, the type one interferon response played a role in the development of pathogenesis. To address this question, we took four week old C57 black six mice that are wild type and lack the interferon alpha beta receptor, intracranially inoculated them with multiple isolates of EV68 and asked whether or not the mice developed paralysis. And here in these myelin curves in the black line, you can see wild type, EV, wild type mice, no mouse developed paralysis following EV68 inoculation but all but one mouse in the interferon receptor knockout background developed um, paralysis. We, to confirm this, we isolated astrocytes from these same mice, and we infected them with the New York and the 949 isolate of EV68. And here in the white bars at 24 hours post-infection, you can see that the New York isolate replicated in the wild type, 
um, background of astrocytes, but it actually it replicated more efficiently when we remove the type one interferon response. And you and in the op, the same is true, but it's more dramatic with the 949 isolate as it did not replicate in wild type astrocytes. However, when you remove the type one interferon response, now you see in efficient viral reproduction. This led us to conclude that the type one interferon response modulates EB68 neurotropism and in immunocompromised or if not knockout mice are insufficient to study EB68 associated pathology. To develop an animal model then, we've had to turn to outbred mice. And we started off with the question of whether or not outbred mice an outbred mouse line would be susceptible to EV68. So we isolated astrocytes from this outbred mouse line. We cultured them. We asked, infected them with multiple isolates of EV68 and then harvested supernatants 24 hours later and did plaque assay looking for uh, the production of infectious progeny. And you can see all of our EV68 isolates replicated within these astrocytes with different efficiencies. We wanted to know next whether or not we could find um, a, a background or have a slew of backgrounds that were isolate specific. And so we took four different backgrounds, the C57 wild type, the interferon receptor knockout mice, and two outbred lines of mice, infected them with a single astrocytes with a single isolate of EV68. And here you see that EV, this isolate replicated once again with different efficiencies in these genetic backgrounds, demonstrating that the host has a critical role in the neurotropism of the virus. Similarly, we wanted to know whether or not the host background also influenced in the same way um, all the replication or neurotropism of the other enteroviruses that have been associated with AFM, for instance, polio. So we isolated astrocytes from this outbred mouse line, infected them with three isolates of EB68 and polio. And here you can see EB68 replicated efficiency efficiently while polio did not replicate at all. We expanded this result by looking at three isolates from the 2018 outbreak of EB68 and also enterovirus 71 and Coxsackie A16. And here you can see that the New York and then uh, three isolates of EB68 from 2018 replicated in this background with different efficiencies. However, the Fermon and the 947 isolates did not replicate at all, nor did the seven, enterovirus 71 and Coxsackie 16. From this data, we can conclude that infection of EB68 is sensitive to the presence of type 1 interferon. Genetic requirements for neurotropism of EB68 is isolate specific, and the genetic requirements for neurotropism of EV68 differ from those that are required for polio, Coxsackie 16 and Entero 71. And so there are many ways to lead, or many pathways that lead to neurotropism, which is a wrong turn for our, our respiratory virus, which just reminds us to keep in mind the lessons that we've learned from polio and other neurotropic viruses studied by Albert Sabin and Richard Johnson, where the virus is less the ability to cause neuropathic disease is less dependent upon the virus, but on some flaw that is host related and um, leads to the barriers that usually protect the, ce the cells of the CNS to being susceptible to viral um, disease. And with that, all this work was done with Audrey Warren and Vincent Racaniello. And I would like to introduce uh, hand the podium to Ken Tyler, who's the chair of uh, neurology at the University of Colorado to tell us about advances in animal models for studying AFM. 